guys, Scott from Aristocop.com here. Hey, and Seth from TheShrinkingPastor.com. And, and MarkwoodAdventures.com Mark here. <laughs> We're, I don't know how much time we allot for these. Nah. But <laughs> anyway, I'll, I'll pick one. <laughs> Pick one and stick to it. Well, we should. Hey, guys. Uh, so, we're uh, welcome back to Mark with Men's Breakfast Club. Um, I don't even know what to say right now. I oh, feel right. like we're just going to go right into it. I feel like I'm holding Plinko chips. Like Plinko? From, yeah, like from like Bob Barker. And, uh, yeah, because they're, they're been about Drew the same. for about 10 years now. Uh, I believe in that Drew Carey is the host of The Price is Right. Like I believe there's such a thing as vanilla frosties. Not at all. <laughs> Blasphemy. Okay. Hashtag. Well, hashtag. Bob never dies. Hashtag. <laughs> Plinko <laughs> equals Bob. Okay. So hey guys. Hi. Scott from Aristocob.com here. <laughs> and Seth from the Drinking Pastor.com. So what boy has in his hands there are not Plinko chips, but those are uh, pipe tobacco tins from Drew Estates. Now this uh, came up while we were in Ohio. Um, I decided that I was going to go ahead and give the Drew Estates pipe tobacco a try. Um, I have had a number of Drew Estates cigars, all of which I disliked. Um, and, and I'm talking about the acid line, which, uh, mm. which just has way too much funk going on. Lots and lots of flavorings that are just uh, not natural to mankind. But uh, I've been hearing some good things about the Drew Estates pipe tobacco and th decided to check it out. So there we are at the wharf in Dayton, Ohio. And I say to the owner, hey, where's your Drew Estates uh, pipe tobacco? He had some Drew Estate uh, pipes there. I'm sorry, Drew Estates cigars. cigars. He didn't have any. It's coming. It's coming. So I posted a comment on Instagram. I think on Instagram. But yeah, I'm just we're at the wharf. Is what it was. We didn't, you didn't even mention Drew Estates. You said uh, we're going to the wharf. Uh, what, do you, what do you recommend or something? Yeah. I don't even know. This is not coming back to me. Well, anyway, um, a gentleman who is a sales rep for Drew Estates. Drew Estates Sam commented on my post and said. To try this, it's a and great shop. Love that shop. Yep. And try the the tobacco blends we've got. Um, and then did a little research. He's a sales rep. And then we asked the the uh, owner of the the wharf, and he said, "Oh, it's a great, great, great guy." Um, so first bit of information is get on Instagram if you can. There's a large number of the YouTube pipe community peeps. Um, on Instagram, and uh, it's pretty cool. Here's the conversation. Okay. I posted that we were at the wharf. That's what I said. He replied, uh, good people at that shop. And then I noticed his name, Drew Estate Sam, and I said, now that I see who you are, we are actually hoping to buy, or were actually hoping to buy some Drew Estate's pipe tobacco while we were here, but they said that they don't have it yet. Um, we were hoping to review it on our YouTube channel, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, in the meantime... Um, I made it over to JR's and they had some of it on hand. So I've purchased at Drew Estate Sam's recommendation, his favorites, Meat Pie, um, 7th Avenue Blonde, and just because I'm who I am, Toasted Black Cavendish. So we're going to break into one of these and try it. I have a suggestion. What do you think? Which should we try first? <laughs> You know I'm always going to pick the meat pie. All right, we're going for the meat pie. But that's, was that your suggestion? That's what I was going to recommend. All right. Um, let's make it a meat-themed day. Well, hold on. This was a different week. I mean, they know. <laughs> you know. I wish I had my other one. My. Uh, oh, my gosh. The rope. Boy is going to love this. Yeah? Is it meaty? Whip it. Oh, that's, uh, that's some Latakia. Wow. This is an English blend, no doubt about that. Reading the back, reading the back of the tin, as per usual, uh, the, the, the the name is just the names are lies. Is what I've come come to determine. I'm gonna start looking for the blend that says like strawberry shortcake. It's called strawberry shortcake. Maybe that one will actually taste like meat. The the back of the tin, in essence, says 
we named it Meat Pie or Meat yeah, Meat Pie because we thought that would be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy this dark Latakia blend. All right, so dark Latakia blend it is. Wow. So I'm changing my opinion of what pipe I'm going to smoke this in. <laughs> uh, I was going to reach for my um, Country Gentleman uh, a Magna Cob, and I guess I'll go ahead and show you. Somebody commented the other day about, hey, on a picture I posted on Instagram, uh, is that a amber stem that you've got there, and, and has it darkened? And uh, the answer is yes. It is, and yes, it has. The amber stems darken and become much more amber. <laughs> um, I, I love this pipe. I'm not going to funk that up with a strong Latakia. I'm going to go with a uh, a Lady Godiva. I just I I, I want to take a moment. <laughs> really, I, I just want to read the tin description. Nothing. I okay. I'm sure I like the tobacco, but. We made a blend and called it Meat Pie. Outrageous. Daring to be just a little different. Imagine we just rewrote some classic turn-of-the-century novel. What does that have to do with meat? A pungent, smoky, medium-bodied smoke that is the epitome of the word classic. Should it be the epity, epitome of the word meat pie? I would think so. Right. I mean, are we talking like um, Meet me up Johnny there. Depp and Sweeney Todd, humans full of meat pie? I think that's what they're trying to say. Oh, so meat pie is people. <laughs> Soylent, Soylent Green, green is, is people. Soylent Green is meat pie. What is the deal with this bick? It's cold in here is what the deal is. There's my complaint about the cold. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm in a t-shirt and shorts. Oh my gosh, that is Latakia E. You are. Not a t-shirt. Hmm? Who dog is that is Latakia E. Mmm. You gonna survive that? Now that his cold is gone. I know. That cold really was a blessing during tobacco <laughs> advent. It could have taste anything. The Latakia was a pleasing break through your senses. All right, we'll try this. All right, so since you're talking new, uh, new YouTube channels or new websites, blogs, I bought a URL last night. Did you? <laughs> that shocked you? No, um, <laughs> he's quite a collector of URLs. And I'm not even going to take a guess as to what it is in case I say one that you haven't bought yet. <laughs> <laughs> and that you want to snatch up. Well, so I have a heads up before we share this video, so that would give me time to go out and true. buy it. What do you think it is? Well, <laughs> I mean, I really have no idea. I know that you were looking into Bo Curious. Did you buy Bo Curious? I thought you bought Bo Curious. No, I didn't. I didn't get a chance to buy it. So you better buy that before this video comes out. You're kidding. I thought you no! bought it. No! I searched for it. So I've been, GoDaddy probably owns it now. I've been, yeah. I've been listening to some Alton Brown podcasts, and uh, he had one talking about um, finer men's clothing. And one of the things he was doing was launching a new line of bow ties with a company called Hook and Albert. Hook and Albert. Um, they're in Atlanta, and, and uh, Hook and Albert is a name of, uh, a, a nickname, if you will, of a, a watch chain, a pocket watch yeah. chain. So the hook is where you hook it on to the button. And the Albert is the chain. And the Albert is the chain. Well, he was going to launch this new line of bow ties. I don't know if you've noticed that he wears a lot of bow ties now. Mm -hmm. They launched it, and they sold out, like, mm -hmm. immediately. Yeah, they're still sold out. So while I'm listening to this podcast... Um, they talk about the fact that, you know, a lot of men are bow curious. And I thought, there's a website right there, or at least a blog. So I contacted Boy and said, see if that's available. You it know, is. The, the, okay, so you need to understand when I say that. You mean buy it, I know. That's what I mean. But I was on my phone, and it, he's calling me on the way up to Ohio where I'm in the middle of funeral preparation. 
And I was driving to Ohio. And he said, I'm in the car. Just take a few minutes, buy the URL. We'll get it. Don't there worry were, about it. There were two URLs I called. So, you yeah, well, the other one didn't. It was already was taken. It? What was that one? Uh, uh, room Note. Oh, Room Note. That would be a great URL. Good blog for listing all of our our pipe review, tobacco reviews. If I don't know, we don't do tobacco reviews. If you if you if you ever have aspirations of of building and owning a website, a uh, couple pointers. First of all, don't ever pay full price because um, if you're buying it through GoDaddy, which I think is the number one URL seller Registered. ever, um, they always have coupons. These URLs, the last few URLs I bought, I paid two dollars for the first year. After that, still don't pay full price. Search for coupons because they'll say it's going to cost you fifteen dollars for the next year. It's not. You can get it for about seven or eight dollars if you use a coupon when it comes time to renew. Second thing, don't ever, 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 ever. Did you say ever? ever use GoDaddy.com to search for a URL you aren't prepared to immediately purchase. Yeah. Because they're sneaky, we're pretty confident that if you search it, especially if you search it a couple of times, that they will buy it to, re to resell it to you yeah. at an auction premium. Somebody. I don't yeah, know it, who, might, it may not be them. The They've got a, a search going on. But we, we've searched for things that were very obscure you search, you Google them first, right? Something you like see, Mark Woodman's Breakfast Club. Right. Right. Probably uh, not going to be owned. But but a, but a whole bunch of things that we have searched for that didn't exist in the Google search, didn't exist in the initial search at mm -hmm. GoDaddy back when we were using GoDaddy right. quite a bit. Search and kind of wait yeah. it out. And a day later, go, go back on. and search, what? Someone bought this. Absurd. Third, uh, if, you, if you are unsure of if the .org, .tv, if, if you really like the name and you may not be able to get the .com but want one of the extensions, I use a website called Panabee, P-A-N-A-B-E-E. -E. Sounds like Panda Bee, and it actually, they have a Panda Bee as their mascot. A Panda Bee? <laughs> yeah, it's a bee with the head of a panda and stripes on it. Uh, panda Bee you can search with words so you can add like two or three words mark woodman's breakfast club and it will tell you first if the dot com is available it does the search of all of the variations of those words in sequence but then it gives you like a hundred suggestions for ways that you can maybe modify it mm. so add an ly to the end add an s and it goes through and tells you those availabilities in 10 seconds so you can know, that's the best way to search, and it keeps you out of the GoDaddy's going to steal your URL loop. <laughs> um, with apologies to GoDaddy, if you're not in on that, but somebody. I still buy all of my stuff from GoDaddy. Do you but really? You buy I it from GoDaddy? I do. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, I use Namescheap. Namescheap.com. And they usually have um, names. Reasonably priced. How much? Hey, construction. How cheap? Not two dollars cheap. <laughs> but, but regularly, every, every day, their prices are, are like the seven dollar range or less. And, and I, they often will do things where the more you buy, the cheaper they are. So if you stockpile a couple names and register them all at once, you can get get away with that. It's just easy. It's easier to to have one and stick with that for doing website setup and stuff. Because you you use like Blogger. Um, which makes it really, really easy to link to your URL, and mm -hmm. then you're done with them. You just use Blogger. That's right. I do more development stuff where I have to actually go into you're the dashboard. No, I host them with a different service, but I don't. Um, I have to do all the linking between accounts, and it's just easier if I have them all in one place. Gotcha. So, do you want to know what uh, URL I? Ah, absolutely. Uh, Yeah, absolutely. You will never guess. <laughs> so, mm. my wiener, your mouth. <laughs> For your hot dog truck. <laughs> we actually had the idea. <laughs> we need to buy that URL now. We had the idea of having a hot dog stand or hot dog truck. And we were throwing around ideas for names. And that one actually was one of the contenders. <laughs> 
you know, in six months when someone shows up on the Shark Tank <laughs> <laughs> pitching their idea for their hot dog truck, we're going to be really sad. But they'll be one of our viewers, so we'll be okay with that. Right. Hey, good luck with that, guys. We, we wish you well on the Shark Tank and uh, with your hot dog venture. One of my favorite, I have a, a number of interests, and uh, when I go out on YouTube, one of the reasons why I don't share my favorites is because I think a lot of folks that are at Aristocob.com are there because of pipes and tobacco. And to share my favorites it would be very confusing, kind of like the reason why I have multiple blogs. Because no one's going to read a blog that has so many different interests like I have. So. Anyway, one of my favorite, absolute favorite, I'm, I'm a big foodie, is uh, Food Wishes. And foodwishes.blogspot.com is the blog that is associated with Food Wishes on YouTube. And a guy named Chef John posts at least weekly, sometimes more frequently, um, uh, a recipe that he's developed. And, and one of my favorite things about his videos is he doesn't feel the need to be on camera. There's lots of close-ups of what he's doing, a lot of activity. He's a very funny, punny guy, and I like that. And uh, as I'm typing in the search bar, food wishes, I mistype. And what did I type? And what other interests do I have? And what is one letter off of food wishes? Blood. No. Nope. So close. <laughs> so close. I now have woodwishes.com. And the, the premise of Food Wishes is he, when he started the thing, encouraged people to share. So what's your food wish? What is it that you would like to know how to produce, how to make? And um, I like the idea of a blog and maybe a video. So you, you can go out asking, asking people. What's your wood wish? What's your wood wish? Probably. <laughs> Probably. Won't ask that so much. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> All right, he. Yeah, big perv. Coming from me, my winner, <laughs> your mouth guy. That is my wood wish. <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> <laughs> Drinking pastor. <laughs> you just got this video flagged. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm not the one that bought woodwishes.com. I wonder <laughs> I wonder how often they wish that we were like Chef John and, and didn't care so much about being on camera. We should show them close ups of things. So what do you think of meat pie? It's I like it. I actually don't mind it. Um, and again the, the deal with me and Latakia, it it, it it always tastes to me like I'm smoking pine um, pine cones or pine needles or something. I can get well, it's not just woodsy. It's it's a very uh, evergreen kind of a taste to it. I don't know why that is. And so it does bring me to mind of certain things. And if I've got a cold or stuffed up, this will cut its way right through that. And But the thing is, this isn't overwhelming right. in its Latakia-ness. It smells overwhelming. Um, in the tin. In the tin. It, it, I thought it was going to be really strong, and it's not. So they're right when they say it's, it's medium-bodied. It's not... Definitely not as, as harsh as some. I like it. All right. It doesn't taste like meat. I'm going to take this smother in bacon. We'll see. That's. I'm so, telling you, I'm going to have a meat-flavored tobacco by the end of the year. That's right. my goal for 2014. So, one tin down in the Drew Estates line of pipe tobacco, and it gets uh, not bad for me, and I would smoke it again. Mm -hmm. So, we'll, uh, we'll try these others in a later video and uh, I think with that we're going to wrap this up what do you say yeah see you guys next week alright visit riskop.com and shrinkingpastor.com